Addiction, fortunately not a thing that I struggle with. The Germans, however, they are addicted to energy, and one of their cheapest and most abundant domestic sources of energy is coal, particularly lignite. We will see to what extent later on in this video. First, some brief insight into the history of Germany's political energy landscape. The German energy transition has been heralded by many as a great success. They look at how much wind and solar capacity were added and conclude that they are the benchmark for decarbonization. If you actually think this, you're wrong. But believe me, Germany remains one of the poster childs for renewable energy. If you want a good news show about renewables, just wait until May or June for the first signs of 80 plus percent RE days to emerge. The Germans added enough wind and solar and biomass burning to the grid that they are able to fuel 80% of their electricity needs on a national sunny and windy holiday. Some believe that the German energy transition is only a decade or so old and that it was Angela Merkel who decided to end Germany's dependence on nuclear power. But that's not true. It has been a process of decades that led to Germany's misguided choice of coal over nuclear energy. There is an immense litany of anti-nuclear activism in Germany. It's decades old and dates back all the way to the end of the Second World War, the partition into East and West Germany, the erection of the Iron Curtain and the subsequent Cold War. Nuclear weapons and nuclear power got intertwined. Understandably so, because back in those days, nuclear power was mainly a source for weapons-grade plutonium. Think about the RMBK reactor like Chernobyl, for instance, or think about Great Britain's Magnox reactors. But all those are a thing of the past. Regardless, they played a significant role in Germany. When West Germany decided to invest in civilian nuclear power for peaceful means, the Germans didn't buy any of it, so this anti-nuclear movement ran through the 60s and 70s until Chernobyl happened. Germany already had a great contingent of people in arms against nuclear energy. So when the nuclear reactor near Kiev blew up, nuclear's fate in Germany was basically sealed. The green movements, which found their origins in anti-nuclear activism, managed to gain power in 1998. Chancellor Gerhard Schröder was the first one to put a political nail into the nuclear coffin. In case you didn't notice, I'm trying to show some empathy with these people. Don't confuse it with sympathy. I'm not endorsing any of it. But I understand how some things came to be. I'm surrounded by people who live with the same frame of mind. However, it is paramount to show these people how misguided their choice is. In this video, I'm not going to dive into the figures. I want to keep it sweet and short. But let's give you some basic insight. Here we have the region Nordrhein-Westfalen, home to some 18 million people. It's the single most densely populated area in Germany. It contains two big metropolises, the Ruhr area and Cologne. Together, they have roughly 11 to 12 million people. It is possible to get from one end of the Ruhr area to the other end of Cologne without ever really leaving the city. So for all intents and purposes, I will call it the German megalopolis. It's an incredibly industrious area with immense chemical factories, manufacturing, and much more. More than 10 gigawatts of lignite burning power plants power the megalopolis. And this is what it looks like when you look at it from outer space. Now we combine all these lignite pits and superimpose them on Cologne. All of these are on the same scale, by the way. Now we see the lignite pits of Eastern Germany. And somewhat tangentially, these are the ones from the Czech Republic and Poland. As Germany imports energy regularly, these may be considered as well. And it's also to give you the insight that Germany isn't the only country doing it. 
So let's get back to the lignite pits feeding the megalopolis. Here's one interesting graphic depicting which villages have disappeared and which are about to disappear. 39 villages so far have disappeared for the sake of lignite and another 11 are about to disappear. Think about it, this is still happening and more destruction is planned. In the meanwhile, the nuclear facilities in Germany are being shut off. And to cap it all off, lignite is the most dirty kind of coal you can burn. Not only is it dirty, it's also deadly. By switching off nuclear instead of coal, the Germans have killed thousands of people. I think that it is quite immoral, and this is the toll we pay for decades worth of heedless and unnecessary anti-nuclear sentiments. Germany's energy transition is a failing thought experiment with real consequences. Expect a second part to this video soon. If you haven't already, consider subscribing as it helps the channel a great deal. Thank you for watching.